Practice problem one. A small firm produces and sells automotive items in a five-state area. The firm expects to consolidate assembly of its battery chargers line at a single location. Currently, operations are in three widely scattered locations. The leading candidate for location will have a monthly fixed cost of $42,000 and a variable cost of $3 per charger. Chargers sell for $7 each. Prepare a table that shows total profits, fixed costs, variable costs, and revenues for monthly volume of 10,000, 12,000, and 15,000 units. What is the break-even point for this problem? So pause here, please, and work on this problem. Try to solve it. Try to build a table and compute uh, the total profits, fixed costs, variable costs, revenues, for 10,000, 12,000, and 15,000 units, and then compute the break even point for this problem. And then come back to see the solution. Here we try to build a table for this problem. So we have to consider three uh, ranges of volume 12,000, 10,000, 12,000, and 15,000. Let's just start with 10,000. For 10,000, let's compute the total variable cost, fee and fixed cost, and total revenues, and etc. The total revenue is the formula, if you remember, is R multiplied by Q. R here is revenue per unit, and Q is the quantity. So the revenue, it says it sells $7. The charger sells for $7 each. So for $10,000, 10,000 units, the revenue would be 7 multiplied by 10,000, which is $70,000. The total variable cost is also a function of Q, the quantity, and that's V multiplied by Q. The variable cost here is $3 per charger. That multiplied by 10,000 units, 3 multiplied by 10,000, that's $30,000. Fixed cost is the same, 42,000, regardless of the volume. Then if we add up the variable cost and the fixed cost, we're going to get a total of $72,000 as a total cost. The profit is the total revenue minus the total cost. The total revenue is 70000 70, and total cost is 72000 So we have $2,000 in loss. Next, we're going to go to volume 12000 The total revenue is 7 multiplied by 12, that's $84,000. Total variable cost is 3 per unit multiplied by 12, that's $36,000. Fixed cost is the same no matter what quantity you have, and the total cost is the fixed cost multiplied sum by or plus the, fixed, uh, the total variable cost. So that's uh, $36,000 and $42,000. $78,000. The profit is the total revenue here, which is 84 minus 78, and that's $6,000 profit. So you can see from these two, negative 2,000 for 10,000 volume and $6,000 profit positive for 12,000. This means that the break even point must be something between 10,000 and 12,000. So let's go for 15,000 now. The total revenue is R multiplied by volume. So that's 7 multiplied by 15,000. That's $105,000. Variable cost is 3 multiplied by 15. That's 45,000. Fixed cost is the same, 42,000. The total cost is the variable cost plus the fixed cost. That's 87,000. And the total profit is the total revenue, 105000 minus the total cost, which is $18,000. Then we're going to compute the break-even point. So the break-even point is the fixed cost minus R minus, divided by R minus V. So that's 42000 divided by 7 minus 3. That's $10,500. So at $10,500 quantity, the profit is zero. We break even. 
practice problem. A manager must decide which type of equipment should buy. Type A equipment or type B equipment. The type A equipment costs $15,000 and type B equipment costs $11,000. The equipment can be operated 8 hours a day for 250 days a year. So the total working hours in a year is 8 multiplied by 250. That's our total time. Either machine can be used, both A and B, to perform two types of chemical analysis, C1 and C2. The annual service requirements and processing times are shown in the table here. Which type of equipment should be purchased and how many of these types will be needed? The goal is to minimize total purchase costs. So we have two types of chemical analysis, C1 and C2. The annual volume for C1 is 1200. The annual volume for C2 is 900. The processing time for these two processes, C1 and C2, using equipment machine A and B are given at the, um, this column right here. For analysis type C1, the processing time on machine A is one hour, on machine B is two hours. For processing C2, on machine A is three dollars, on machine B is two dollars. Use the economic analysis to find out and figure out which type of equipment and how many the manager should purchase so that they actually can achieve this annual volume here with the minimum cost. Then come back to see the solution. So please pause and work on the problem and then come back to see the solution. Here is the solution key to the problem. So first we develop this table to find the total processing time for processing C type 1, C1 and C2 on machine A and machine B. For C1, for example, it takes one hour on machine A to process one unit of C1 and we need a total of 1200 annual volume for C1. So that's 1200 multiplied by one, which is 1200 processing time for machine A. For machine B, it takes two hours per unit to process one C1, one unit of C1. So to process 1200 volume, we need two multiplied by 1200, which is 2400. So 2400 is the total hour per year. That's the total processing time to process 1200 volume of C1. We have also these figures for C2 as well. For C2, it takes three hours processing time for one unit of C2 on machine A. So for uh, processing an annual volume of 900, we need to have 900 multiplied by three, which is 2700. On machine B, it takes two hours per unit. So that's two multiplied by 900, which is 1800. If we add these up, we're gonna get these val the, the numbers here. 4,200 for 4,200 hours processing time annually for on machine B, 3,900 processing time annually for machine A. But how many hours per year do we have? What is our time horizon? So we can work um, shifts of eight hours per day for 250 days a year. So that's a total of 2,000 hours annually. So if you compare these, what we have, if you have one machine, no matter what it is, if, if it's machine A, it can work only 2,000 hours in a year. If it's machine B, it can only work 2,000 hours a year because that's all you would have timing wise. So in order to have 3,900 of processing time in a year, you need to have more than just one machine. 
how many machine do you need to have at least 3900 hours two machines right because if, when you have two machines two multiplied by two two hours you can work two hours two thousand hours that's four thousand hours so four thousand hour is greater than 3900 so if you have two machines of type one type a you can complete all the processing for c1 and c2 on the volumes annual volumes given and you're done but to to purchase two machines of type a you need to pay two multiplied by 1500 so that's two multiplied by 1500 15,000 that's thirty thousand dollar so you can meet the demand for c1 and c2 requirement annually with two machine a if you pay, spend thirty thousand dollar let's see how we can achieve this using machine type b for machine type b we need to have 4200 hours annually given that each machine can only work 2000 hours annually you cannot achieve this by two machines if you have two machines of type b you get at most two multiplied by 2000 4000 and 4000 is less than 42000 so you you need to have more than two how about three so for three machines of type b you get a total of three multiplied by 2000 which is 6000 hours annually and that's enough it's more much more than 4200 right it's this is more than 4200 so with three machines of type b you can do this job but how much is it going to cost each machine b is going to cost eleven thousand dollars to buy three of machine b it's going to cost you three multiplied by eleven thousand that's thirty three thousand dollars so you can do this job with two machines of type a at thirty thousand dollar cost or you can do it with three machines b at thirty three thousand dollar well which one is better of course buying the cheaper one which is the two machine a is the least costly so the manager should do that option